What is up, Meal Prepping family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna rock some burgers and fries meal prep for the summertime. And if you're on keto, you might think you can't have burger and fries, but that is until today, because I have a low carb, crazy delicious recipe that I know you're gonna love, and it's perfect to take outside and enjoy in that heat. So let's do it. Let's make some low carb keto meal prepping. Juicy shrimp burger seasoned with green onions, mayo, capers, and lemon cooked until golden brown and served on a lettuce bun with all the fixins, and served with seasoned crispy jicama fries. So here's the deal. If you love crazy healthy meal prepping that actually has flavor, click that old subscribe button because we are rocking out new videos every Friday morning and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, this recipe starts with two pounds of fresh shrimp in front of me. Shrimp are perfect for the burger because they actually have a lot of gelatin, so you don't need a breadcrumb binder to put everything together, but I do want a specific texture. So I'm gonna grab a third of the shrimp and add that to my food processor. And now that that's in, I'm gonna slap on the lid to the food processor and blend away until it's nice and smooth and creamy. All right, take a peek inside the processor here. Now I'm gonna take the rest of the shrimp, add these to the food processor, and that's how we get a burger that is a little chunky monkey and a little smooth and creamy. You don't want something that's 100% creamy or 100% chunky, unless you're having chunky monkey Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> then I want it super chunky. All right, that is in. Now it's all about seasoning the shrimp burgers to make them taste delicious. So I'm gonna start with about a uh, teaspoon of salt. And then for a little bit of binder, I'm gonna use a keto-friendly mayo, meaning it doesn't have any sugar. I add about a tablespoon and a half, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder. Shrimp and lemons are BFF, so I'm gonna add the zest of one lemon in here. In case you're wondering, after the lemon is zested and kinda looks like this, all beat up, just wrap it in a plastic wrap and then store it in the fridge. That way it doesn't dry out and get moldy. Add a teaspoon of stone ground mustard. You could also use Dijon. A teaspoon of capers for a nice salty, briny flavor. Some black pepper. And a couple tablespoons of green onions. And then slap the lid back on the food processor. And I'll take a peek inside the processor here and you'll see exactly what I mean. That's what you're going for. You can see nice chunks of shrimp in there, but for the most part, it's broken down and you can form it into a patty. All right, now to form the burgers, Art just saw me break out my favorite utensil, the peanut butter jar lid. Art, what am I doing? Forming your patties. Exactly. You might think, what am I doing with a peanut butter jar lid? But when I scoop the mixture into here, it'll form uniform patties every single time and they'll all cook at the same exact time too. Go ahead and add it to the lid that has some plastic wrap on top. Pack it in pretty good and then just lift it out and the burger pops out perfectly. And see how uniform it is? Each burger is gonna be the exact same size and weight. So far, everything's pretty easy. I love it when the machine does the work for you. The mold really helps out. Just do yourself a favor and buy good quality shrimp. There's a lot of crappy farm-raised shrimp out there and they feed it really bad food and it's kind of cramped in. These shrimp are about $10 per pound. They're wild and they're from Whole Foods, but they're really, really good. So definitely try to buy good shrimp. All right, this should make about five or six burgers. I'm gonna keep forming away and then we'll stash them in the fridge because they need to set up. In case you're wondering, you can do this exact same recipe with salmon to make salmon burgers. And you know what? You can either chill these in the fridge for 30 minutes or Art and I are pretty hungry. So I'm gonna put them in the freezer for 10 minutes to hurry up the process. All right, while the burgers are chilling, let's get started on the uh, jicama fries. Art, how do my jicama boobs look? <laughs> if you haven't had jicama before, it kind of tastes like a potato and an apple made sweet, sweet love and had a culinary baby. And since we're going for potato fries, this is exactly what you want to do. Artist rolling his eyes at me right now. So first thing we have to do is peel the uh, jicama. Use a peeler, peel all the skin away, then cut the jicama in half, then cut it into half inch thick slices, and then cut those slices into thick cut french fries. And that's what you want it to look like. Kind of thick cut steak fries. If you want to do them thinner, you can do that too. I was actually debating if I should do jicama fries or zucchini fries for the video, but I thought zucchini fries are kind of lame because <laughs> you coat them in like almond flour and Parmesan, you bake them, they don't get nearly as crispy and you can't, you can't kid someone. You can't fool them into thinking they're eating fries. With this one, you can. Although someone told me that Trader Joe's has uh, peeled jicama sticks you can buy. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, is that true? Because if that is, do that. Don't bother peeling it and cutting it. That'll save you a lot of time. All right, I got a pot of boiling water here. 
Just like pasta, I wanna season it with a little bit of salt, that way the fries cook and season at the same time. Add a healthy pinch of salt to the water and then carefully drop the fries. Cooking it in the water first soaks out that extra starch in the jicama, allowing them to get super crispy when they go in the oven later on. I'm gonna do 15 minutes in here and then I'll yank them. Go ahead and drain the fries over the sink. Shake out any excess moisture. As if it weren't hot enough outside already, you can get a free jicama facial and really open up those pores. Now this step is completely optional. I'm gonna spill out the fries on a towel and then go ahead and just pat them dry and get the excess moisture off. Now I say optional because you don't have to do this, but Art and I are all about crispy, crunchy fries and getting rid of the excess moisture will help you do that. And speaking that it's hot, that's why I'm wearing tank tops lately, but someone like a few weeks ago actually left a few comments and said, they love me, but please never wear a tank top again. I don't know what that means because my guns are popping. I think the tank top looks good, but what do you think, Desi? Looks great. Thank you, it looks good, that's all that matters. All right, so go ahead and spill the fries onto a clean sheet tray. Let's drizzle in a couple tablespoons of oil. Then shake over three quarters of a teaspoon of smoked paprika, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, teaspoon of salt, and then use your bear paws and mix up everything really well. If you're wondering where I got the uh, spice canister where you could shake that, I'll leave the link down below in the uh, description box that comes in very handy. Then it's very important to arrange this in one even layer here. And then remember we have the oven preheating at 425 Fahrenheit. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna pop this in the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. While the fries are doing their thing, let's make my version of keto McDonald's special sauce. That starts with mayo. Use full fat mayonnaise. Reduce fat mayo and some full fats have sugar. You gotta buy one that doesn't have sugar or better yet, make your own. Let's add a third of a cup of that to a bowl. Add two tablespoons of keto ketchup, meaning it has no sugar. You can make that or buy it. And add a teaspoon of keto dill relish, meaning it doesn't have sugar. A couple splashes of good old Tabasco sauce for some spice. A quarter teaspoon of salt and a couple cracks of black pepper. And mix it all up. And then all of a sudden, it turns into that chunky pinky sauce that we all know and love. They might call it a secret at McDonald's, but not anymore, baby. Actually, McDonald's doesn't even have keto sauce. Theirs is full of sugary ketchup. Don't that look good, Art? It's delicious. So that with the burger on the iceberg lettuce bun with bacon, with avocado, with tomatoes. I mean, come on now. This is what we're talking about. All right, this is done. I think we should move on to making some burgers. All right, you guys, my shrimp popsicles are out of the freezer. I'm preheating a large nonstick pan over medium high heat. Let's drizzle in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And once that oil goes in, swirl it around the pan. And let it heat up for 30 seconds because I want these to get nice and golden brown as soon as they hit the pan. You might be asking why I'm not using cast iron. And yes, I do like cast iron for 90% of the applications, but I want a gentle cook on this and I want to easily be able to flip the shrimp. So the cast iron's not the best uh, pan for this job. Let's get the shrimp burger in the pan. Perfect. Getting nice and sizzly immediately. Now, Art and I were just wondering if we can get all six in the pan, and the answer is no. Yeah, we can try to be heroes and cram them in, and probably it's gonna work, but, Art, what's gonna happen if we do that? You know, the pan. And? You're not gonna have a nice, crispy texture. Exactly, Art and I are on Team Crunch. If you're on hashtag Team Crunch, click the like button too, because if you do crowd it, they're gonna end up boiling in their own juices, so your patience will definitely be rewarded. I'm gonna let it go for about 45 minutes, and then we'll give it a flip. That's right. <laughs> Did you hear that? You're not in Team Crunch. You're not on our munch. That's gold art. All right, it's been five minutes. Let's flip the burger. Dude, look at that golden brown crust. What did we tell you about not overcrowding the pan? That is why. Let's flip the rest of these. All right, four, maybe five minutes max on that side because shrimp overcook really easily. Whether they're in burger form or shrimp form, Overcooked shrimps are like a rubber band. So make sure you don't overcook it. Four more minutes, then we're evacuating the dance floor. All right, the fries are ready while the second batch of the shrimp burgers cook, but I think we need a fry fanatic here to try them out, Desi. You could be our official taste tester. By the way, if you don't have a splatter guard, make sure you get one. I'll put the link down below on Amazon. It will prevent the oil from going everywhere and make your cleanup a lot easier. All right, let's try those guys. Whoa, crunchy, do you hear that? Mm, they have a bite. Uh -huh. I like the spicy rub on them. 
Yeah, they can pass for fries. <laughs> okay. I like the spicy rub too. All right, these are done. Let's wait for the burgers to plate up. And then do you want to help me plate this burger? Sure. All right, sweet. All right, last of the burgers is out. My friends, come on. Look at these golden brown shrimp burgers. Give me some love because they smell unbelievable. I've been having a fight back Desi from eating all the French fries. So I think it's time to plate this dish. What do you think, babe? Let's do it, babe. Let's do it. Slather some of the secret sauce on the bottom of a iceberg lettuce bun. Put down a slice of tomato. And don't forget to season it with a bit of salt. Put a shrimp burger on top of that. Then a couple slices of avocado and then the top lettuce bun. Look at that burger, you guys. So darn juicy and sexy. And then don't forget to scoop up a big healthy portion of fries, plate that down, and put the burger next to it. And there it is, my friends. Keto burgers and fries. It's literally a summer celebration done low carb and keto friendly. I cannot hold off Desi with the fries anymore, and I can't hold off myself with the burger. So let's go in here. Let me feed you, babe. Please. <laughs> It's gonna be ugly and very messy, people, just so you know. Mmm. Mmm. All right. You're gonna crush this. Do I have something on my face? Yeah, you do. It's a little something, something. Hold wow. on. Before I even comment about that, I gotta wash it down with a fry. Or two. Yum. Mmm. It's a five napkin kind of burger. Man, guys, the shrimp is insanely juicy and perfectly seasoned, right? I love the zest and I love the capers in there. It's just very, very vibrant. The crunch from that lettuce is banging the sauce. It's all about that secret sauce, right? Yeah, baby. I've never had a shrimp burger before. It's amazing. Yeah, like I said, you can do it with salmon if you want, but shrimp burger is pretty decadent. With the fries that are nicely seasoned, it's all about that cumin and that smoked paprika. This is banging. You guys, hook us up. Share this video. Art, come in and try some fries. Get a bite of this. Uh, the recipe, the storage, the heating, the macros, all that good stuff is down below in the description box. Um, if you want to see two more pretty epic keto recipes, they are below us right now. But we will see you next week. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking mad love. Peace.